so today we are going to discuss about some topics so as uh, you must be aware about uh, what the topics we are going to cover so it's somewhere related to microsoft azure it's somewhere related to power bi it's related to the integration of both of them it's related to the dashboard creation as well and some separate topics as uh, endpoints and in stream analytics okay so the very first uh, let us talk about the prerequisite that we should be aware about okay so obviously that uh, would be prerequisite we should be aware about Azure, which is obviously a part of uh, cloud computing, or we can say we, it is uh, cloud computing. Meanwhile, if anyone can explain me what is cloud computing, then that will save over time. As you know, we are not much over the time. And the Power BI. What do you understand by cloud computing? So basically, you know, the cloud computing, okay, it, it is basically somewhere, you know, it is... Uh, like providing on demand availability for all the services that the people or that the companies are using. Okay. But every service has to be provided on internet. Okay. Or we can say every service has to be provided virtually. Okay. Like let's take a case. For example, you have bought a laptop. Okay. You have bought a laptop in which uh, there was a 16 GB of RAM. Okay. Now you are going to run a software like in Informatica. Okay. Or I would say a laptop with a 4 GB of RAM. Now you are wishing to run a software like Informatica, which requires minimum RAM should be 6 GB. Now what you should be doing for one software installation, are you going to the hardware shop to ask them, okay, to increase the RAM or something, or uh, like you would be going to buy a new laptop? I think so. Both the things, both the scenarios will be completely wrong, isn't it? So we need a computer which which we should have at least six GB of RAM. So are there are there some online websites that are providing us this thing? Okay. So the point was like here we are talking now. Like okay, now it comes like cloud computing as I told. Okay, it is a service to provide. Uh, uh, like it is a new way to provide all the services that are being used in the production in as well as in the testing purpose or or our personal use as well but over the internet so yes that is cloud computing and then this cloud computing have their providers one of them is azure that we are going to discuss apart from that we have uh, aws amazon web services and then we have gcp as well okay so that thing the example we were talking about no like if we have to install some software which has the requirement that does not meet the requirement of my current laptop then in such case okay i would be not going to a hardware shop to increase uh, i would say uh, like the ram of my system okay instead yes i have an option of virtual machines okay so virtual machines are the online computers that we can use according to like the r basis as well okay this is the very best uh i would say the service that azure provides it says you have a pay as you go subscription, which means the amount of service that you will be using and according to the hour per hour, okay, you will be charged accordingly. So if I just had to work for one hour, no, I would be paying some rupees, like I would be saying uh, according to the 6 GB of RAM, that would be 9 rupees, hardly isn't it, per hour. So that would be fine. That would be easy for me. That would be cheap for me, okay? So yes, we have this Azure and let me show you how the Azure portal looks like, okay? So there is a website you need to create an account and yes you can if you are going to practice no you don't have to go with the pay as you go plan where pay as you go is obviously the chargeable so here we have the free option as well to create azure portal okay azure portal is the website where azure provides all the services on the internet over the internet okay so here i have many accounts and i'm logging in one of those so this is how the things look like, okay? This is our portal and here we have all the services, okay? We are, we are having the stream analytics job, Azure Synapse Analytics, virtual networks, storage accounts, Azure Data Explorer, resource groups, virtual machines, virtual machine scale set, and these are the categories where you can go through. If you will go to the all services, you can get the categories, okay? And according to the categories, you have n number of services over. 
like if you want to go to the compute which means using the functions or using virtual machines okay you can do that so this was the overall agenda no like if you if i here know that was the scenario what i can do i can create an account i can uh, create a virtual machine and i can perform my task for one hour or two hours yeah uh, see uh, rarely most of the services are free to be very true okay weapon but here you know some of the services the rare services okay that usually the developers use the azure developer okay there are uh, various designations in uh, cloud as well okay especially in azure the administrator the developer the solutions architect the azure devops engineer the security expert okay so all the services are available over here and most of the services are exceptionally free okay and some of the things will not be free or they would be having some limited access okay limited to some hours or limited to some days okay but probably all these services like virtual machine storage accounts and everything are completely free to use okay so you need to create an account you need to use your microsoft account you would be able to log in okay here to check your recharge i'm using a word recharge that should not be used but because we have some pressure so i want the things should be very clear over here so the word is subscriptions okay that shows you what do you have okay like having a sim does not works for us isn't it we should have a recharge in it as well so same thing we have an account but we need to have the sponsorship we need to have a subscription so although it will ask you to add a credit card in the starting and all okay but uh, it is not going to charge you you can exceptionally use the free 200 credits okay and you can make use of all the services over okay so you would be able to practice all the things over here whatever we are going to talk right now or if you would be doing something else as well, okay now the other thing is power bi Okay, Power BI is basically the reporting tool, as the people mentioned in the very starting of Power BI. So, who is the developer of Power BI or who created this Power BI? Very simple question, I know that, but it would be great. Exactly, Microsoft. Okay, when we talk about the Microsoft like products now, Power BI is one of them tool, or you can say one of the softwares. Okay that helps you to ingest the data i would say okay whatever the data you are having okay now you want to make reports on that you want to analyze them okay now everything is done through power bi now now to be very true okay especially the uh, the the clients that are following you no know, the microsoft so they are going with the power bi so basically, you know, you would be able to create data sets, you would be able to create, like transform the data, you can create some data models, you can create charts, you can, like I would say, you would be able to visualize the data in a very good format. Okay, and right now being a data scientist or a data analytics person, okay, this tool is highly in demand, although we have Tableau as well. Okay, we have MSBI as well. But yes, Power BI helps you to integrate various sources. Okay, various sources. Now, before we talk about the Power BI, you know, you need to install it. Okay, and not right now. You can go with the webinar. Later on, you can try it. So you have something called Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop. And you need to install it. Okay. So when you will be logging it over here, because I already have it. Let's go over it. Okay. So this is how the Power BI looks like. Okay, so there are two things that we have discussed a lot. One is Azure, which is a separate platform and the website is portal.azure.com where Microsoft is providing you all the online services. Now these services are just not limited to our CSV data or any database. It is, it is providing you computers, that is the virtual machine. It is providing you the virtual networks, okay? And it is providing you storages. It is pro also providing you machine learning concepts. And separately, it is also providing you and visualization tool. Okay, that is the Power BI. So what they did, okay, like, okay, please have a desktop application for quick access. Okay, because see, everybody is not working on Azure, isn't it? They have some separate work as well. That just depends upon the data, visualizing the data, analyzing the data, and then creating some reports that are really important for business intelligence. That is the BI, isn't it? 
So they have created separate application as well. You have the web application also available plus desktop application. So let me make aware about this as well. So let us open it. And the best thing is like both the products are of Microsoft. Okay. So the integration part, or I would say the connection string is not, it's, it's quite very easy. It's quite very easy. So the thing is the three topics that were like the Power BI, okay, the integration of Power BI and the Azure. And then the final was building dashboard, okay, on the data, okay, through Azure data. Okay. Now the thing is what, what is the overall concept? Here, this is the Power BI desktop, as I showed you just uh, the portal, portal.azure.com. Similarly here, this is how the desktop of Power BI looks like. Here you have different charts, different charts, basically Ruby, Python. Uh, here you have the pie chart as well, okay? And many other charts, the bar charts, the line charts, okay? Here you have the multi KPI. And plus you have other charts as well, like the scattered chart and everything. Now coming to this, here you have the get data option. The only use, okay, all those who are already experienced, okay, who have been working. This option is the very important, I would say, because this is how you import the data. You have several options over here. You will be learning later on, okay. Excel workbook. Fine. So here you have all the common data sources, basically, okay, where your data is residing and then where you need to, what you need to perform. So here you have several options, data host, SQL server, analyst service, text, CSV file if you have, if you have the web, if you have old data feed, if you have blank query, if you have Power BI template and more options, okay. We will be using the more options, but before that, no, I would like to explain like what is, what is, what we are going to do right now. So let me open the quick draw.io. Okay. And there are different windows of cloud computing, how we select best cloud computing service among them in a startup organization, which cloud computing is better and why. So that to be very true, no, you need to know like, okay, it's not only about the startup organization, like what amount of data you are handling or your company is going to handle, okay? Because it's not only about the companies, it's all about the plans as well. What happens now, like if you have a huge amount of data, you may go with the import export option as well, in which Microsoft Azure is going to send you some data disk or the complete data box. You would be uploading the things over there and they would be uploading it to the server. Okay, so now coming to the windows, now to be very true, all are very good at their places. AWS also holds a good market. GCP, that is the Google uh, Cloud Platform, also holds a very good and the Microsoft Azure as well. Okay. But to be very true, now, as you know, we have been using Windows for a very long time and it makes a difference. Some people say, like, okay, it does not make a difference. Amazon has a good growth. Obviously, it has a very good growth. Okay. But the thing is, like, no, Microsoft is a big brand. And let me tell you if uh, talking about the market now. So the companies, Microsoft and AWS, not for Google Cloud Computing, because if you are a DevOps engineer, if you are a field of DevOps engineer, no, like talking about the Kubernetes, the orchestration platforms, then that would be quite good. GCP and rolling with the GCP, going with the GCP, but otherwise you can go with Microsoft or with AWS as well. Okay, preferably like I have been using Microsoft from a very long time. Okay, so I am very like very the interface of uh i would say no for the microsoft looks looks quite very good okay not as aws although i have the access of aws as well i can show you for aws they have uh, intellipad has provided me some credentials let me see if it works so there are uh, only slight differences to be very true here we call virtual machines in azure here we call it as ec2 so see, this is how the GUI looks like of AWS. Okay. So to be very true, no, and like, you know, uh, I am never, in, I, I'm not uh, to be very true, like uh, very uh, happy with the interface of the AWS, although it's, it, it is a point of choice. Okay. So uh, not going up to that point, but it's still, no, both the things, both the platforms are very quite good. I cannot make like the difference why Azure is, but let me tell you, Microsoft Azure is a little bit tough. Okay, it is a little bit of 
difficult, but it has a very good way of providing sorted services and the plans to be very good. So we were about to talk, okay, let me open a new one. What is the agenda for today? So for example, uh, the integration part, okay? We are aware what is Microsoft Azure and what is Power BI, okay? Now, they obviously, these are big tools, okay? These are big portals. So they would be having many services, okay? So I'm, talk, I'm taking all these things that will give you a good overview, like, okay, what could be done and what, what is the range of the services that we can utilize with both of these things, okay? So here, as we told, this is our Microsoft, okay? This is our Microsoft Azure. Here I have a Power BI. Now, as you know, most of the companies are switching to the cloud. Okay, instead of removing their, uh, instead of I would say like using their uh, physical servers, now they are moving to cloud. They are storing their data on cloud. Now, why they are doing that? Why they are not installing their own servers? Now, here I have been using the term called server. So let me enlighten this word as well for the freshers. Okay, server is just like uh, uh, some 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 hardware which has a motherboard which has iq controllers okay and it has a lot of storage okay but storage are quite expensive so if your companies are not using any cloud they would be having a server room okay even the banks have okay so it has a server room where all these there is a rack okay there is a rack and in the rack servers are kept basically and all the motherboards okay, are connected to the LAN cables okay, and all this data is maintained over there only. Now, if there is a small company, they are maintaining their own servers. So let's talk about the cost price as well. Okay, See, if we are having our own servers, obviously we need to buy these servers. Okay, It is going to be very costly. Now, if if it goes, okay, if it goes very down, I would say like if, if, uh, if there is any issue, with the server okay you need to have a network engineering team now you only have to manage the backup of the data it's your sense of responsibility okay so if you are using the cloud you don't have that see let's me take an example of google drive whenever we want to empty our uh, like a space from our local phone no what we do we upload it to the google drive we can delete it and whenever wherever in whatever computer i can retain it just logging it to the Google Drive, but it does not means like the data is not saved somewhere. Yes, in the back end of the Google data center, the big uh, buildings, the data is being stored. But I don't have that sense of responsibility, like whether my data should not be lost. Now this is a dependency. Now, now this is a responsibility of Google to maintain that. Okay, that happens like when you are having your own servers and when you are using the cloud. Okay, so here we have this Microsoft Azure. Your companies are moving to Microsoft Azure. Now, for example, due to anything, okay, here you are storing some files. Okay, what you are doing, you are storing some files over here in Azure. Now, to store the files in Azure, let me tell you, you are having a number of services available n number of services are available to store the file for example your company was working on some data okay or somebody has uh, used the data or from a data warehouse your companies has asked the data that you have been okay saving from a very long time or your company has been generating from a very long time okay so in such case now for example Azure is a common platform that can be used between a number of teams. People can, everybody, whosoever has the access to the same account, they would be able to add the files over there. Okay. So there are many examples, Azure SQL database. Okay. And uh, we have Azure blob storage. You must be aware about Azure blob storage. Or let me do one thing. Let me write it down separately. Okay. What do we have? We have SQL database. In Azure, we have blob, we have table storage, we have queues, we have a storage for Postgre, and uh, we have HD Insights, we have Data Explorer, and many more services to be very true. If I would show you, let me go and quickly show you this. All services, let's talk about a storage. And here you have all these things, a storage accounts, a storage uh, 
recovery service vaults, store simple device managers, store simple data managers, sync services, stack edge, Azure Net App files, data shows, and more. Okay. So the thing is, like, no, let's let's consider a scenario. You are having some data over here, okay, in the Azure. Now you need to integrate it to the Power BI, okay, and you need to perform the reports and you need to create the dashboards and then the concerned person of your company will look to that reports and then you would be like a strategy you will be creating the methodology you would be changing the methodology to work okay how you would be doing that or whatever was the requirement okay so the main point is like if you are holding some data or if the data is recklessly coming to your cloud that is microsoft azure okay in any of this storage services that i showed you then how you would be building it to power bi okay and how you would be proceeding with it okay so in such case now here i would be using azure data explorer azure blob storage would be a very small part okay very small part like okay you have an storage account we can create an storage account we can create a container in it okay and we can upload the data from our local system anyhow okay anyhow you can do that but here i would explain you azure data explorer there's a service called azure data explorer now what is the difference let me tell you so let's complete it and then we will discuss the difference. so for example i need to create an azure data explorer Azure Data Explorer and normal Azure Blob Storage, okay, the normal storage account. It has a huge difference, okay, because in the storage, you are just able to upload the things, okay, you will get a URL, you can add it to a third party service, so, so that the data can be accessed from any part, but you cannot perform queries over there. Okay, you can you cannot perform queries over there. You cannot transform that into the pie charts or in in some better visual. But here in the Azure Data Explorer, no, basically it is a real time analytic tool. Okay, you can add your real data, real time data. Okay, and then you can perform analytics over here. Okay, so here let me select the subscription. You will be just having once. Yeah, I have been working from a very long time, so I have n number of subscriptions i would be going with one of them let me create a new resource group now talking about the resource group it is nothing in your microsoft azure if you want to create a number of services no then anyhow you need to create a container like uh, like let's take an example of our kitchen okay whenever we we bring some rice and all we just don't openly keep it okay we need to have some n number of containers one container for rice one container for pulses as well and for it, numerous things similarly here if you want to manage the service if you are creating any service you need to place it somewhere so that you can filter it out later on it would be quite good okay so let me create a container with the name webinar cluster name what it's saying okay azure data explorer will be having okay a node behind it that will be helping you to access the data quickly because somewhere no, you are going to perform operations on it okay so you need to have some nodes behind it okay that that you need to continue with. so here we just need to provide a name so would be name let me provide name as a webinar cluster and okay very good everything looks good coming to the workload development test if you have some like if you want to go with some opt optimized data the data would be just fetching from the compute okay the compute category of service or only from the storage then you can go according to it okay here we will be going with the development and the testing okay now it says okay what should what are the size you are asking to because i told you know there would be some vm acting in behind that will help you to operate on the large data because you are going to perform some operations isn't it so this is what it is saying select a vm size to support the workload you want to run the vm size determines factors such as processing power memory and storage capac capacity so here it is providing me one only, not giving me any choice, maybe in the region and according to my subscription as well. Then it's saying availability zones. This is a different topic. You can just consider it like as uh, 
the the like uh, placing your data in multiple regions in many regions or in a single region if you have many zones no you can place the data over there only okay just like if one of the zones okay for example you have three zones in india you are having data centers in each zone if one of the data center goes down then how you would be serving the clients if the client has stored the data in that particular zone okay in such case if you want to have some backup now you can just select all of them okay so if one zone one data center goes down you would be having other zones as well okay and these are not interlinked for example if the power supply goes for the very first data center in the zone one okay your other data centers would be quite up and running and you would be able to fetch your data but right now obviously it would be increasing the price as well so you can just go with none of the availability zones a scaling policy it says okay if the workload if the data that you are going to save on azure data explorer okay or if you are bringing a live streaming data over azure data explorer and if the size is getting huge and huge your virtual machine is not able to handle it then in such case do you want to increase the instance then this is called the scaling policy it will scale your virtual machine by adding one more virtual machine behind okay that is one if you want directly two you can do that but it says right now you don't have that n number of instances available going to the configurations do you want live stream ingestion over here if you want to do that you can do that like on okay go to security here you have some security purpose the advanced settings over here encryption regarding okay so right now not going into that much details we don't have the much time as well so let me click on review and create so it will take some time and then we will have our azure data explorer okay now here let me do one thing as soon as i will click on create now my data explorer will start getting created okay but it will take a good amount of time because anyhow our virtual machines are getting created in behind okay so i already have one of the azure data explorer okay so let me show you and i will tell you all the things will look like exactly same so here i will i have this test data web okay test data web is the name of azure data explorer and the new one that i just showed you is getting created now okay which has the name webinar azure data explorer so here see let me show you how when it would be created now how it would look like so this is how it will say test data web you have you have azure data explorer cluster okay this is how you look like okay it looks like you have a url to fetch this okay on the browser and to do your task very easy okay here the i would say no you can do the things from here as well okay but it is a little bit of tedious task so you can just copy it and you can just perform it over now when you have created data explorer obviously you need to have a database as well you can store the database so in such case what you need to have so here no, we have all these things this is the url plus we need if you want to add a database that obviously you should do because where you will be storing the data so here can you see this we have this database i have already the two database but if you wish to create a new one what you would do you will just click on add a database it will ask you like what database name would you like to provide so like webinar database and just click on create this won't take time because it is not a very big source so let me give some quick uh, and here we have okay we have this webinar database okay I, it got created two times so here you have the database okay we, we don't have hardly anything over here but you can connect this database to the event hub iot hub event grid. okay these are the separate topics basically event hub is a kind of source okay where whenever the events are triggered you specify like the event is triggered then this should happen okay basically you can say like uh, when we have the websites now what happens like if a person is surfing a page again and again he should receive a message from our websites having some uh, good courses okay so that is somewhere whatever the events he would be doing according to that the action should be triggered okay so you can make several connections and you can import the data as well okay 
Now coming back over here, the data explorer, let me copy the link. Okay. And let me show you. This is the link and I'm pasting it over here. Okay. So you can see over here, as soon as I have uh, done this now, I have a query uh, access as well. Okay. And you can see over here, there was a database. Okay. The default database help. Okay. Sorry. This is a cluster help. Okay. And we have these database in the help cluster. This is the cluster I just showed you test data web. In that we have two data, isn't it? New database, test database plus webinar database as well. And you can quite see here, we have the webinar database as well. So similarly in one of the test database, no, my new database, test database, or you can see talk about this help cluster. No? In this, we, in, under the samples, no, we have a table. And there are many events over here, like a storm events, IoT, Geo, Spatial, okay, COVID-19. So basically you can have any data that is being triggered or that is being retained by your company, okay? The thing is like how you would be importing it in the Power BI, okay? So let me talk about the storm events. So why I have used the Azure Data Explorer, you must get some clarity like, okay, you have these many operations, you can add N number of databases. It's just not only about holding the data. You can perform queries. For example, this is the storm events Excel file. And these are the columns that would be present in this file. If I want to perform the query, what I can do here, we have the suggestions as well. We'll be having a storm, you select it once events okay this is how we are getting the suggestions okay and i want to see the data set i would be just running this and here it should load my data quickly within some seconds over here okay so this is this it will load all the data for all these columns okay over here and i would be able to perform more queries okay once all all, all the data is loaded okay now apart from it i need to import it okay can you see we have the data we have the data over here, the episode narrative, the storm, okay, the total number of deaths, the damage property, the crops happened to the damage, and what was the event type, okay? And here you are going to get n number of options to filters, auto size column, ascend, descend, color by value. It will just color the value once, okay, according to the parameters we are passing through. Like if you want to do according to the time, you can do that according to the country, according to the state. Okay, it will keep on changing that. Now, talking about importing it now. So we have this Power BI. I want to build a report on it. On it okay. So we have the get data option. In get data, we have the more option. In more, we have Azure. And see the n number of services, the blob is storage, the table is storage, okay? We have database for PostgreSQL, we have uh, analytic SQL, SQL, okay? Data lake storage and data explorer as well. So you can just verify, bring all the details, okay? The respective you are trying to connect. So here it will prompt me for the cluster. And what is my cluster? Let me go to back to the Chrome. Uh, inside my help cluster, we have this. So what I will do, I will just click on edit. I will copy this URL. Probably I will come over here and I will just click on OK. Here you have two more advanced options. Do you want to import all the data over here? Or you just want to direct query from your Power BI. That is also good. Right now I'm importing it. It will take with some seconds and all the data would be right here with us in our Power BI. And whatever you want to perform, whether you want to perform reports, where you want to perform like uh, some uh, graphs creation and all, or any kind of analyze, you can do that, okay? Now here in the samples, as I told you, we had the file. So we have this storm events, isn't it? We have this storm events and let me have a look. This is the table. So what I can do, I can just load this data over here if I don't want to change. And I will have my data loaded over here. Later on, I can create reports of it. Okay, I can create reports of it. Now I already have a report, so I will just directly try to create and create a dashboard and show you. Okay. So let this open. So it's gonna take time, okay, but anyhow, it will it will show the data. 
okay and we would be able to create the reports as well okay uh but anyhow okay let me do one thing let me okay it says it has been loaded the only thing is it would be reflecting the things okay story events now for example i just want to quick uh, create a quick uh, data okay like for what event what happened like whether it was a flood whether it was a tornado what was the death probability okay what happened deaths how many deaths were done okay and i want to see this data can you see this i have the data with total 520 of deaths direct and extreme cold wind chill made 38 deaths excessive heat made 57 heat made 48 3 and accordingly if i want to make some change in the report i would be quickly able to make that as well okay similarly we can have we can build a good report okay so let me just bring my report okay because we don't have that much of time okay so i already have a report so let me bring that as well so let me open some report okay i have it here final analytics report i was working on a finance data it was a general data only because i won't be able to leak data of any company that i'm currently working on that is a general data yeah importing means bringing the data and it would be saved in this particular software okay until unless we are not downloading winkit from here itself it won't be saved okay can you see here we have a good report okay it will load and here it we have the sales target the year units sold by manufacturing price there was a data no where the finance we had some companies okay we had some countries what sales they made okay what was the sales target if you want to see the data only for 2013 that would change these reports accordingly and much more okay so the last thing i would be showing over here now how we would be creating the dashboard if you have created this report okay so how we would be doing that we will be just logging in to power bi service power bi service because in Power BI service, what is this? This is an online, I would say, you no, know, like uh, uh, the online application has been provided to you, okay, where the, the, you can store the data, okay. Whatever you are performing in the desktop, you can also access it from here, this particular service. So here, you now what you need to do, you need to create a workspace, okay. Creating a workspace would be quite simple, like Abhishek, clicking on C. I got the Abhishek workspace. Here I need to add the content. Okay. So, what I will do, I will go to the Power BI and I will click on publish the report that I want to make it to the dashboard. Save. So, now it says, where do you want to publish it? I want to publish it to Abhishek. Select. And it would publish this particular data now in my workspace. So here, let me move back to the, and here it has been success, got it, okay. I'm going to my Power BI service, and you can see under the Abhishek we have, this was the raw data, and this is the report that you are seeing. What you need to do, if you want to create a dashboard, you can create the report from a dashboard as well. Okay, it will show you open over here. You have three options, pin to a dashboard, and new dashboard, okay, you can provide the name, Abhishek dashboard, and just click on pin light. So go to the dashboard, and here you will have all the data in a better format, okay, and you can chat here with your teams, you can comment, you can edit it, you can mark it, while in the meetings, these are very useful, okay, what, what, what you are working on. In a dashboard, you can have the visuals, okay, these are the visuals of the reports. You can have n number of visuals from different, different reports as well, okay. So basically, you know, this is how you would be able to fetch the things. Here you have the dashboard op options, okay. You have the reports option, whatever the dashboard, whatever the workbooks you create over here now, everything can be fetched over Okay, but I hope the things are a little bit clear to you. And two more things. Okay, one was the Azure Stream Analytics. Okay, Azure Stream Analytics. So Azure Stream Analytics, no, it is nothing. It is just a querying and monitoring tool. 
what it is it is a querying and monitoring tool basically okay here you have a stream analytics okay for iot or you can just have a stream jobs as well. so what is this okay whenever for example like whenever the data is coming in your real time running application okay what you can do using the stream analytics you no know, you can perform queries directly and whatever the changes would be happening you no know, you can see the changes in the reports as well okay so that is a different point this is just uh, like uh, querying the real time data we use our azure query tool okay that is the azure stream analytics okay and the separately coming to the endpoints see endpoints are just a service provided by azure to use your critical services very safely like whenever we access any storage account that i showed you from here now okay what it made it will it will use my public ip to access any service of azure but what i want i don't want it my laptop or any virtual machine in my portal okay any virtual machine in my portal accessing the any other service it should not use the public ip it should use some some reserved ip or some safe ip for that you create service endpoints okay so as soon as you you use the service endpoint no you are your ip address is not exposed okay or your data is not exposed publicly okay that is how endpoints helps us okay to use the services okay so we can see endpoint is just a service that helps you to use your critical service okay privately okay not exposing your data publicly okay keeping your public ip address in safe that's it. so uh, okay guys the, that was all i hope you would have get got some clarity so i would be dropping from now and somebody from the team would be helping you okay uh, will be taking this session uh, further okay i would be dropping now thank you everyone sure i'll just uh, i was just walking you through the courses of intellipart what we have i'll just give you a short walk through on it so yeah uh, talking about intellipart we are an online education learning platform who offer professional training courses in technologies like uh, cloud computing is one, one among them and we have data science bi cyber security and programming digital marketing and so on uh, today uh, we had a wonderful uh, session from our trainer mr abhishek and uh, it was regarding creating azure dashboard sorry power bi dashboard with the help of azure cloud being the platform so as we all know cloud is a very important factor right now in every industry not only in it let it be banking let it be into uh, let it be into any other department healthcare or even if it is into bpo or manufacturing everybody relies on cloud for storing data and managing everything so we have high educated courses and uh, very relevant programs offered by many universities and intellipart training courses as well so i will be walking you through one of the university program which is offered by iit roorkee where we have the concepts of advanced technologies and cloud so you don't have to fear the word advanced here everything would be from the basics and scratch where we talk about how exactly cloud end came into the picture in 1990s or how it developed in the year 2002 to 2005 and how aws came into the market then how azure came into the market complete history of cloud with more practical hands on so it speaks about entire clouds architecture along with that it talks about how to connect other technologies into cloud one example is what we learned today how power bi dashboards or how data engineering or data visualization is done with cloud we have azure data engineering for that so all these subjects are getting taught here and uh, i was just walking you through the program benefits you might have seen the key highlights of the program it's completely an online live interactive classes interactive meaning you can verbally discuss with the trainer and faculties not only in chat even verbal discussion would be possible by unmuting yourself in the live classes once you get enrolled for the program and one speciality of the course here is you get to learn 50% of the program entirely online through live interaction from iit roorkee faculties and professors remaining 50% would be delivered by industry experts having 12 15 years of experience and minimum qualifications of 4 plus years into the respective technology or the subject cloud and devops and here is a description about the enict department enict is electronics and ict academy 
and they are directly connected with the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, supported by Government of India to provide good quality educations through the medium of IITs and NITs in India, public uh, sorry private, uh, public colleges in India. And as you all know, universities like IIT have a very good reputation in terms of education since 90s. We have been hearing being uh, in India, or even if you are uh, settled somewhere else, you might surely know the value of it. And IIT Roorkee is one of the universities in Uttarakhand, and having an achievement of top six best engineering colleges apart from that ninth best overall category other than engineering colleges since 2020 and one among the best IITs in QS world ranking 2021 QS world ranking meaning global ranking records in IITs so this is a very reputed program and you get a certificate once you complete the training it is as equivalent and valuable to a PG diploma or a, if you do a degree. It's not a degree, but is as equivalent and valuable to a degree. It is a certificate issued from the department of VAUCT from IIT Roorkee. So these are the career transitions which I was walking earlier. We can see non-tech professionals who have moved into cloud working in process associate or people coming from BPO or people coming from into different different domain have moved into cloud or even experienced individuals working in as a system engineer or having worked as a, uh, I mean, have, having already worked into some technical profile have upgraded themselves by pursuing these courses. Cloud has a lot of segments under it and a lot of designations as a trainer spoke and we have many things getting covered here. The qualifications for applying for this program is minimum to have an undergraduation done no experience no criteria as such even a fresher having passed out in 2021 or 2022 can also go for the program or even anyone working in non-IT having done their undergraduation or even IT professionals working as a product manager or working into database or Oracle cloud or anything as such can be most eligible to apply for the program so these are the tool descriptions and you can see our instruction details here Dr. Nitish Kumar, then we have Dr. Sanjeev Manhas and many other faculties and professors from IIT Roorkee and industry experts like Mr. Dev Kinanja, Dr. Dev Kinanja would be delivering the courses online, live, interactive. And I will walk you through the curriculum. So like I said, there are no prerequisites for the program. Anybody who has an interest to build a career in cloud is most welcome to join for the program, having an undergraduation qualification. We'll start from the preparatory of Linux and we'll also introduce you to Python and get you started with this as a prerequisite. And we'll also introduce you to cloud and complete historic development of cloud since 1950s to 2020. Complete brief description would be given. And then we have the complete concepts of PAL computing, distributed computing, which would be delivered by the Ruki faculties and ID Ruki faculties. So this, this, Beauty of the program here is it speaks about how exactly cloud came into the picture since the 90s and how exactly AWS was introduced in the year 2005 and how they overtook the market and brought the evolution of cloud computing right now. In 2022, a basic qualification to apply for any job, a data engineer job or even a data science job or even if it is a QA or testing, anything, they ask you to have a minimum qualifications of at least one cloud or Two cloud platforms, AWS or Azure. So that is the very important fact about cloud. Nobody can run away from learning cloud. It is something which is mandatory as we all have to know how computers work or laptop works because you're going to be working in real life. Similar to that, you need to know at least one public cloud platform to be able to apply for a good job in any company to upgrade yourself. So that is the future. And we have concepts like AWS Solutions Architect and we have uh, Azure also getting taught here. It speaks about entire architecture of cloud. So there's no programming or development involved. Uh, solutions Architect is responsible for designing and implementing solutions on cloud. So it thoroughly speaks about all the services under AWS, like EC2, Lambda, Redshift, which is all uh, virtual services and resources which you can access with the help of AWS. Or let's say if I speak about Azure, we saw how Azure portals work today. So we have Azure also getting covered here. We have the complete architecture of Azure and the administration part of Azure getting taught. Apart from that, the main beauty of the program is connecting other technologies and evolving concepts in cloud. So we have the complete uh, uh, overview about how big data systems work like MapReduce or Google App Engine, OpenStack. If you're working in a big data platform, working in Hadoop or Apache, Spark and Scale, you might be able to relate to these concepts. Or even if you're new to these concepts, you will start from the basics. And emerging technologies like IoT or edge computing, uh, VNF, which is virtual network function, all of these things will be getting taught here. Apart from that, we spoke about Azure data engineering today, how to create uh, Power BI dashboards on Azure. So these concepts will be getting taught in this particular subject, Azure data engineering and data analytics. 
So we have Azure SQL, Data Factory, Databricks, Team Analytics, and all of these getting, concepts getting taught here. And the most important topic in cloud is also DevOps. So DevOps is some, something which is very important for automation. We will have all the tools getting taught here under DevOps. And finally, the integration of how DevOps is getting connected in cloud, AWS DevOps and Azure DevOps. So these are the 18 modules and subjects, and it's completely a practical project-oriented program rather than theory based so we'll have more real time exposure and hands on you can see uh, every modules would have multiple hands on exercises after every subjects and once you complete all the subjects after every completion of every, every subject you would be having real time projects starting from beginner intermediate and advanced level projects into different different industry ppo sourcing or into banking related or into it related production or many other projects which is into industry oriented so you get hands on experience qualifies you to have good experience while applying for a job and you can see reviews and testimonials here of our students who have pursued these programs and have good job right now and what is the exposure they got. And we have a lot of hiring partners as well. You can see and research from our website here. Talking about career services, it's very important to have support after completion of the training courses as your knowledge must be implemented. So Intellipart is going to help you out with the job after the completion of the training. We'll help you with the profile building initially throughout the course, and then we'll have the resume building and LinkedIn profile. There is no additional charges for this. It comes along with the program uh, uh, tuition fees. So after 70 percentage, you'll start building your resume profile and then a LinkedIn profile. An interview preparation would be conducted where we'll have the mock interviews uh, from the uh, mock interviews with the technical experts who will give you constructive feedbacks and try to improve you based on your performance till you have proper confidence. So once you're in the actual interview, you can perform well. And mentoring sessions would be there depending upon your prior experience and education qualifications. Job assistance, there would be minimum three guaranteed interviews for the students who have successfully completed at least 80 percentage upon submission of the projects and assignments. And it'll make sure that the resume is very attractive in such a way that you have good hands-on and real-time experience in cloud. And there's also an exclusive job portal with IntelliPart. It's jobs.intellipart.com. We'll have premium access to this portal for lifetime. How we have LinkedIn or Nokri.com, which is a, which is open source for anyone who can apply for a job. This is a private job portal for IntelliPart students. These are the companies, our alumni who are working at at the present, and you'll have a peer learning option for connecting with students of and your peers if you are joining for the program, where you have hackathon challenges or career service upgrade announcements of the programs, and you'll have a good collaborative learning approach where it is very important for online education, making new friends, sharing your uh, experience of the course, or having some doubts cleared from your friends, having a virtual interaction, making so that's very important. That's a peer learning option we have. Admission details are quite simple. You need to submit the applications here. And after the application is reviewed, you'll have the admission panel giving a call once the program and once the applicants are shortlisted and brief you with the training information, then you can process the enrollment. So this is the program fees, 99,009 plus GST. It would cost around 1,16,837. We have the application deadline the coming September uh, 10th, the coming Saturday. And the program induction is also scheduled on 10th of September. Weekend classes are available on Saturdays and Sunday, 8 to 11 p.m. And for applying for the program, we can directly click on apply now. You'll have to fill in the basic information and the students would be getting a call from the admission team and you'll be, help you out. You'll be helping out the complete description of the program once you're shortlisted. So you can go through the FAQs for any further questions or queries, or you can click on the chat option and that reach out to us. So these are the details. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Great. Thank you, Baran. Thank you for that. Great. Uh, with that, uh, I don't see any queries in the chat. So let's move forward and end the session. Thank you for the time, guys. Uh, I hope the session was interactive and helpful to you. I hope you gained a lot of knowledge from Mr. Abhishek. Um, we'll meet again. So stay connected and have a great day. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.